break down to move up. The old LPIA terminal could soon be a hotel. Supply and demand. What does it mean for you when BEC tries to handle the strain in the summer? And computers for the kids. Cabinet ministers help to bridge the digital divide today. Find out more. The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report, starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. The Linden Finland International Airport today is now something to be admired after for years. The old building had been called a very ugly airport. Good evening, everyone. I'm Chris Saunders. And good evening. I'm Altaviz Manning. Thanks so much for joining us. However, the question now arises, what will happen with the former domestic and international terminal at Linden Pinning International Airport? Jim Anita Swain tells us that NAD CEO and President Vernice Walken shed some light, indicating that an airport hotel is a possibility, but a final decision has not been made. By this fall, the offices of the Nassau Airport Development Company and the Meteorological Department should be relocated from the old terminal at the Linden Finling International Airport. NAD CEO Vernice Walkin, pressed on the fate of the terminal, said that its future is definitely being looked at. Eventually those facilities will be empty. So the question becomes, what do we do with that space? Um, do we demolish it and uh, leave it as vacant space? Do we allow some other structure to be, to be built there? Um, those are questions to be determined. One of the things we've been considering is uh, an airport hotel on some portion of that property that's still to be confirmed in terms of exactly where it's located, for example. But those are the kinds of things we are uh, considering. While not giving a definitive date, she accepted that something needs to be done with the former domestic departures terminal. We know that we can't leave the structure the way it is. It has to be either covered or demolished. So we're de trying to determine the best approach. From a financial perspective, in 2014, NAD's financial revenue grew to $71.6 million, a $7.3 million year-over-year -year increase. Operating expenses of $24.6 million resulted in income of $47 million, an increase of $5.6 million year-over-year. NAD Vice President of Finance and CFO Chris Ryan explains how the $409 million debt is being handled. Happy to report that the uh, project was built on time and under budget, which was very important for the uh, lenders to understand that what we say we do, we will deliver. Subsequent to that, for the next uh, few years of operation, what we say we do, we deliver. And so far that has been the case. So there is a structured uh, methodology in which we repay the debt, and we've been maintaining that methodology and paying it back on schedule. Ryan explained that the debt is broken down into two tranches, senior debt and participating debt. The annual report shows that the participating debt was cut considerably from $52 million in 2013 to $12.5 million in 2014. Senior debt showed an increase moving from $496 million in 2013 to $513 million in 2014. Ryan says the focus remains on repaying the loan as soon as possible. Jiminita Swain, Saturday Network News. There remains a myriad of challenges and questions on whether or not BEC will be able to handle the demand when major developments in New Providence come on stream over the summer. Deputy Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis, who has responsibility of the critically challenged government agency, says they are working out final negotiations with partners. And as Janae Noel Ferguson tells us, an announcement will come soon. It's been months now since government officials promised to release the name of a partner for the Bahamas Electricity Corporation. Sporadic power outages have also renewed the call by many for reform within B.C., which is now challenged with outdated equipment and the need for alternative sources of energy. Minister responsible for B.C., Deputy Prime Minister Philip Davis says generators are being bought to alleviate the strain on the two power stations, but in the interim, the new partners for B.C. would have to upgrade the facility and construct a new power plant. 
all that is part of the uh, negotiated uh, position that we have arrived at. And uh, a lot of that is still being worked out, but at the end of the day, the Bahamian people could be assured that in very short order, relief in respect to their pocketbooks as it relates to the cost of electricity is in hand and in sight. And those major upgrades, he says, will come with a hefty price tag. On the eventual plant that is settled upon, that the cost of that could be anywhere from 125 million to 200 plus million. That would be a split cost between the government and the company, or the company is going to absorb those costs? No, we, those details of financing will be worked out, but it's anticipated that will be done on a, on a vendor purchase type arrangement. That is what is anticipated, but at the end of the day, those, those details will have to be worked out um, once we identify the supplier. And while there have been concerns from BC's union on the impact any new partner will have on staff levels, Mr. Davis says the government is negotiating to ensure very little impact as possible. We'll be working out the details of how that, that, uh, how that impact will, will be minimized. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, the, we, we, the, what we have indicated is that we don't expect them to to downsize BEC, uh, otherwise than through the natural attrition that occurs in the corporation. Okay. Davis says the announcement on BEC's new partner should be made soon by Prime Minister Perry Christie. Janae Noel Ferguson, ZNS Network News. Well, from power generation, we move on now to news from education as the members of parliament made a significant investment in the education of the nation's youth today. It's an effort to strengthen the reading capabilities of primary school students and one the prime minister says is needed. Cleopatra Murphy has all those details. The country must not pay lip service to the commitment that every child counts, Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie says, and must ensure that the educational system works for all students. We have to find a workable way within the context of the resources available to us to ensure that the system that we operate in education is predicated on that commitment of every child counts. His comments came at a press conference at Cabinet Wednesday morning, where 10 members of Parliament donated 260 computers valued at $156,000 to Mission Educate Bahamas. The donation gives public primary schools greater access to the Tune Into Reading program. Mr. Christie says children come from different circumstances, including poverty, and in some cases go to school without breakfast. The country has to be informed of the current position that children face and the country has to find the formula to introduce programs that provide the level of comfort to the child when the child is going into the classroom. Schools in New Providence, Grand Bahama, Rum Key and other family islands will receive the computers that were donated through the prompting of Minister of Education, Science and Technology, the Honorable Jerome Fitzgerald. In order for our students to excel, they must be provided with the necessary scaffolding to ensure that they build towards a bright and secure future. Founder of Mission Educate Bahamas, Chris Savusis, says the donations would further the program. Struggling readers in these schools will now find the help and support they need to close the gap and get back on track. Teachers will also have a viable and revolutionary tool to reach them with. One of those students who have seen improvement through the reading program shared his experience. I was reading below my grade and now I've risen. I was in the bottom screen when I was in grade three and now I've risen to the top in the top screen of grade six, deputy head boy of, pri of Columbus Primary School. The Prime Minister says it is the country's responsibility to give students the tools they need to succeed. Cleopatra Murphy. ZNS Network News. Amazing story there. From Parliament now, it was a race against the clock for the legislation to be debated in the House of Assembly today. In as little as two months, the Bahamas Institute of Chartered Accountants would have faced another suspension from the International Federation had legislation not been presented to bring them in line with compliance worldwide. 
It's said to be a crucial piece of legislation as the Bahamas was one of two countries in the world to be suspended from the International Federation in 2012. Although the Bahamas got the green light 18 months ago, having the new legislation in place is paramount. Financial Services Minister, the Honorable Hope Strawn, called it a red letter day for the accounting sector. Mr. Speaker, there is no doubt in my mind that by this legislation we are yet again transforming another sector of our economy. I understand that the bill was circulated to BICA and its membership and their blessing has been obtained. The accounting profession is critical to the sustainable development of our country and this legislation will further enhance our reputation both here and abroad as a first class financial jurisdiction. I have no doubt that we are once again on the right track to build a stronger Bahamas. Meanwhile, MP for East Grand Bahama and deputy leader for the FNM says he supports the bill, but feels additional legislation is needed to make a comprehensive impact on financial services. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I call for a Fiscal Responsibility Act, a Whistleblowers Protection Act, Mr. Speaker, which is so very, very important because often Individuals from the public feel, have information, but they feel that if they were to reveal it, and this goes across the criminal aspect uh, uh, of, of, of what we are faced with in this country also, Indi individuals feel that information that they may share uh, will result in some kind of uh, penalty. Accountants tonight are reacting to the bill, calling it an historic time for the industry, and it is something that will propel them to the next level. Darnell Osborne, president of the Bahamas Institute of Chartered Accountants, along with chartered accountants Philip Galanis and Gowan Bo, underscored the importance of the legislation, especially as the group faced another suspension. If you have investors coming in and they inquire as to the auditors, the attorneys, whatever, um, they would note that on that, because it's also very public, the our action plan for for BICA is on the IFAG website and for the world to see that we were not in compliance. So this is going to now be broadened so that it's not only international firms that are going to be reviewed, but all accounting firms that engage in public practice. I think that's going to be better for the society, better for the business community, and will ensure persons who are engaging accounts to be able to have a confidence level that they are dealing with persons who have been reviewed and who have been sanctioned by the Institute. The biggest challenges that we're going to have going forward is really putting in place a formal process and procedures to ensure that this is not seen as a penalty program, this is seen as a, um, an uplifting program. Police investigating another broad daylight shooting. I'm Jared Higgs, I'll have those details straight ahead. This portion of the news is brought to you by the new Shell and Letter, designed for extra miles. 